took a while to get here, but at last I can show you the Winchester self-loading rifles, which I think you'll find quite interesting. Collecting is a bit of a patience game. It took me a while to find all three models, the 1905, the 07, and the 10. And you know, there's all this hysteria about self-loading rifles, people running around so concerned. Of course, these are over a century old, and you'll be surprised later in the video how this story all unfolds. But let's start with the basics. So there were a whole bunch of patent problems that Winchester had to deal with. So how could they offer a self-loading rifle when Browning had patents for long recoil, short recoil? Anyway, I guess the engineers at Winchester decided to keep things simple and they came up with what I think are probably some of the most unique self-loading centerfire rifles of significant power. It started with the 1905. This is in 35 Winchester and that's how they work. I took it apart. That's why the four end slides. You'll see how cool this is in a minute. This is, you'll notice I'm not turning any bolt. I'm not releasing any lever. Nothing's happening because this is a straight blowback firearm. Now, as most of you know, blowback is used in almost all 22s, the rim fires. So you have to offset the forward energy of the bullet with equal and opposite reaction of the cartridge to go backwards. So you have to delay the action from opening until the bullet exits the muzzle and pressure equalizes because that's one of the principles of how this place operates. So how do you delay the action from opening? Well, with a long recoil system, you have all kinds of tricks that you can use and short recoil as well. Blowback, all you have is mass. A 22 bolt is designed to weigh a certain amount and through trial and error and more recently using computers, they, they know what weight to make the bolt. They didn't at this time. In any event, just watch this, it's so cool. So there's, there's the weight that counteracts the force of the cartridge. Now, if you're logical, you'd probably want to know what the cartridge looked like. So it looked, I don't have any, that's why I don't have any to show you. This is a 351. I'll put it down so you can take a look at it. That's for the 1907, which we'll look at in a moment. But this is the original 1905 in 35 Winchester, and it has a removable magazine, which is beautifully made. And unfortunately, you probably can't see the markings, but maybe you can. I hope I have it the right way. 35 caliber. And I was completely lucky with this rifle. I've, I've handled and owned more than one of these most of the time. They've been shot so much, and because of this weight, this is a significant weight. If it looks easy, uh, I don't know why it looks easy, but there's a spring in here, and there's a weight, and then there's another spring. So, I mean, it's significant force to move this backwards, and all this pounding and the absence of really effective lasting buffers in this system means that most of the time, when you find these, they're splintered, the stocks are broken, somebody's been playing with acro glass and that kind of thing, and the forend is broken. Not this one. This one is just in phenomenal condition. <laughs> so um, I was happy to find it. Anyway, the 35, for all its good features, I mean, it solved the self-loading pro problem. And even those beat up ones I described to you, with the broken stocks at that time, I still had ammunition, but it's going back 20 years. They worked well. They are very clean and I like the blowback system. It's too bad that it takes so much counter acting mass to delay the ejection of the case, but that's just how physics is. Anyway, the 35 was too weak. So they came out with the 351 self loading. And this has a very cool extended magazine. The factory magazine is actually here and I'll set that there so you can compare them 351 and 35 and the 351 is essentially the 35 but longer so this is the 351 self-loading and it came with this cool extended magazine I forget how many rounds but like I said 
all this hysteria about self-loading rifles, these things have been around forever, including these extended magazines. And I think a friend of mine has one that even holds more rounds. Anyway, uh, same concepts. You can see you push back on this. Now we're getting serious force because that is a 35 caliber bullet. I think it's 180 grains. You can look all this stuff up. And these are not weaklings. Uh, people complained about an absence of power or lack of power with the 35 Winchester. In fact, if you go into that encyclopedia of cartridges, the author called it one of the most useless cartridges of all time. I don't know if I agree with that. I think it's effective within its range. Um, for the 351 and the 401, which we'll look at in a minute, you need one of these puppies, which is a spanner wrench, whereas the 35 you can just take out a screw to get the fore end off. Here you need one of these. I just tried it and it works well. Um, there's an even bigger counterweight in here, and these are even more prone to splitting. The, there's just so much. This is hard to even push back to show you. And uh, why is it designed this way? Well, there were patents about this, and apparently everything was patent, patented. Oh, and they all are takedowns. See this little knurled button or knob here? It's on this one. It's, it's on them all. forgot to show it to you on the... 35. I don't make a habit of taking these apart. I have done it years ago, but um, I don't know. I, I think it would go back together many times without a problem. I just don't do it. And same with the 401. So first came the 35 caliber model 1905, then came the 07 and 351. Now we're talking, um, I don't know, would it be safe to say 3030 territory in terms of power? Probably something like that. But you know how things go. People still wanted more power. So then Winchester came out with this really impressive puppy. And this is the 401 self-loading. There you can have a, a look at the, the uh, muzzle of that one. So that's a that's a more significant bullet and I don't even try to memorize the ballistics for um, making the video I probably should but significantly more power and I you know whatever the bullet diameter is I'm presuming if it's a 401 it's a 401 self-loading and again you know, <clears throat> lots of force required and the magazine for this one yeah, it's marked 401. So there you have all three, 401, 351, and 35. Um, usually people write me after I make these videos and ask me which one do I like the most, and my answer will probably surprise you, even though I have trouble finding ammunition. This is by far the most fun to shoot. Uh, not just this rifle, all of them. Uh, recoil is minimal, and if you're operating within 100 yards, it's completely effective cartridge and as you, you you know me by now I'm not rushing out to shoot stuff at 900 yards and so on just fantastic but getting back to the um, revelation of the video you probably know it already or maybe you don't um, the soldiers during the Second World War were armed with a 45 ACP sidearm and I've owned those and I'm probably not the best handgun shot it's hard to control that pistol. So there was a need for a carbine and um, all of the major arms manufacturers were invited to submit a prototype. And you've probably heard this story, but anyway, um, depending on how much scotch is flowing, Winchester designed the M1 carbine in like two minutes or two days, or two weeks or a month, uh, something like that, but here it is. So. When you see this, you, I mean, everybody knows how good these are. It still is my favorite um, carbine and weapon from World War II. Uh, I've had all kinds of great success on, on running things with the M1 carbine. And here's the part that's cool when you see the cartridges. Here's the M1 carbine. And whether it was two minutes or a month, uh, they didn't have to go very far to know how to design 
a um, mid-power cartridge. Now, of course, the M1 carbine is gas-operated, but altogether, when you handle it, now it's lighter, but when you handle it, you sort of are thinking all the time, gee, this is sort of a variation, even though this is a two-piece stock and this is a one-piece stock. But they went ahead, um, came up with this in record time, and it probably remains one of the most shootable, if underpowered, uh, military carbines of all time. Uh, like I said, it's just fantastic. It's always performed well for me. And this is the auto ordinance. I think they're still being made, and um, I, I've had nothing but success with the auto ordinance. I don't remember ever having a jam of any kind with these, um, using any ammo. Now I never use hand loads in this carbine. Anyhow, there you have it. Um, a lot of people talk about these Winchester self-loading rifles. They have all that you would want in a firearm, walnut and steel, beautifully made. I think given what they had to work with, they were confined by patents, they came up with this blowback idea. They probably could have made the stocks a little better or maybe buffered the action. But given the realities of the time, phenomenal and they do come up. I wish somebody made ammunition uh, more available. Actually, I'm getting ammunition from Montana. Uh, somebody's loading the 35, supposed to come next month. So hopefully I can show you that. And 401, I have to get it at gun shows. 351 seems to be around. And a friend of mine um, makes 351 ammo out of um, 357 Magnum. He turns the rim off. Of course, I, I, I don't have time for that. wish I did. But apparently it works well. And um, there's all kinds of um, ways people make things work. Somebody was telling me something about the 35 uh, Legend or 350 Legend, but I didn't quite understand what they were saying. Maybe it works or can be adapted or something like that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you followed the story I was trying to tell. It's actually fantastic and all of these are worth owning and underrated, especially that 35, which is just a dream little carbine because they didn't have to make it so heavy because the cartridge is still minimal that you, you know, it, it, oh, it's just great. Anyway, it looks like a pump action, doesn't it? Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Please um, subscribe and if you can, um, help the channel by joining me on Patreon and we try to do something on Instagram every day or two um, to keep you interested. Thanks again and we'll see you next time. All the best.